try something else and just say, well, we can't possibly do that, so, well, what happens in, in say, five years if the, if the current thing where we just take for granted industrialization and globalization and, and the whole nightmare of it? It's just not, it just doesn't make sense to, that's, that's the irresponsible genocide if you ask me. Like the folks in, I was in Brazil and... I'll do the animation, so raise your hand if you have a question, and I'll, you know. You know and people are, people are trying to uh, take up the challenge in different ways. Uh, I was in Brazil in February for a couple of weeks, and, you know, they're, they're well aware, they, but they do see, they were presenting the, the, the felt need. There was one booklet that they made, it had a graphic on the cover of people going up this slope and then going over the edge. And, the, and the, uh, the caption in Portuguese said, well, we've come this far, we can't go back now. And I, and I thought, you know, when I, I gave my little talk and I just held it up and I said, that says everything. You know, you know not quite everything, but you know, I, I thought that was so perfect. Um, I have, uh, just like uh, my problem with uh, this ethnocentric fear of genocide is that the genocide is going on. And millions, billions of brown people are being completely obliterated, their culture, uh, their future generations. So when you guys start talking about, well, isn't going back to the primitive going to obliterate us? Well, why do you think that it's more important to worry about your obliteration than about ours? I think it has a lot to offer us in terms of making it the, the, some fundamental transformations in our lives to help us get to more <coughs> sustainable ways of living. Um, yeah, and so I think some practical types of anthropology kind of experiences to help de-civilize ourselves um, are learning, learning these skills, learning these skills and practicing them. So if it's like making fire, making shelters, like, how do they do it? It's, it's quite the experience, and it works on many different levels. And I think you can take that in, more, in a more fun way, in a more like, practical way, try and use it in, try and use those ideas in your kind of city context, in your civilized context. Try, try foraging in the cities for a while, see what that's like, see what it does to your mind, see what it does to your senses, see what it does to your sense of community and, and that experience. Try, try going a winter without turning your heat on or something, or, or a couple of weeks or something. See how that pushes you and see how that makes you grow and see how that can, can contribute to our uh, sustainable future. Yeah. That sounds good, yeah, yeah. It can be very liberating and, and, uh, and, and empowering. We don't need all these mediations. We can be with the earth and, and do those simple things that we have lost. You know, it's, we can recover that. Well put, I think. So, please speak louder, so because the translators don't hear everything. So, yeah, please. Yeah. Um, I wonder a lot about the rejection of mass society and uh, how that can be compatible with anarchism. Um, you seem to present prim primitivism as. Uh, a new exciting wing of anarchism. Um, I personally think that it's an outside theory. Um, a lot of what anarchism is based on is self-organization. Um, people as, as workers, as consumers, as neighbors, um, coming together and organizing society without government, but in a massive way, like <laughs> on a large scale. So it seems to me primitivism is kind of waiting for some kind of ecological disaster to go to a society that's on a smaller scale. And within that smaller scale, maybe you'd be able to achieve some kind of utopia. 
but there are no answers for society of the scale that we're living on right now. There, don't, there doesn't seem to be any answers to me. And anarchism does have answers to the society of the scale that we're living on right now. And I guess my question would be, um, how do you, see, do you see class divisions reforming? Like, let's just say, let's just say we return to a hunter-gatherer society. Um, and then I also question the population drop, and there's lots of questions that come up. But let's just say we return to a gatherer hunter society. Wouldn't there also be class divisions in that society if there were very little resources? With the people that are living on Earth right now, like George Bush and um, you know CEOs and like powerful capitalists, right? Don't you think they would want to like control the resources even after like the breakdown of industrialization and civilization? So how would primitivists challenge that the reformation of class society? Well, yeah, we, that's uh, it's part of the thing. I mean, we certainly live in a class society. You could say that. Uh, in terms of origins, it makes sense to me to look at division of labor or specialization, which first divides the subject, reduces and narrows the subject, and that's really where class society comes from. Divided society follows right from that. You know, to go back to class society in that sense. So, in other words, you could say that primitivism deepens that theory, the class theory, I mean, I think it does, among other things. But, uh, I mean, you, you brought up a whole bunch of questions. I, I don't advocate at all a passive waiting for a collapse. Not at all. I mean, we can be active. We can, we can tackle this. If, if there's more of a dialogue about all this, then it, it's possible that people will do that and not just sit there waiting for it all to fall and waiting for that as a some kind of uh, catastrophe that just simply falls on people. First of all, I think it's really important to, to bring up uh, my disagreement with the comment that the ladies over here said with regards to painting anybody who's critical of, an, of a primitivist position as being inherently racist and against brown people. Because that presents brown people as this monolithic uh, group that is, of course, all in agreement about the value of primitivism. And that anybody who would dare to question that is inherently a racist. And I am tell you that that is not true. And I am certainly not a racist, and I love brown people, Colonialism and I love all people, and I'm here as an anarchist today, and if I believe in anarchism, it's because of my love for people. I find the, the thing that's most frustrating about the ideas that you're bringing up here, first of all, it, they are very simplistic and very reductive, and it's true that in the space of this kind of a workshop, it's very difficult to go into an enormous amount of detail about different kinds of anthropological fact or history or whatever. But at the same time, I think you have a responsibility to not gloss over or, or reduce or, or, or present it with this overly sim simplistic view of how primitive societies were. And uh, the, for me, the, the, the real irresponsibility, I think, of these kinds of notions is that it's, it's a, a very defeatist kind of point of view. Because you're drawing a specious argument with regards to technology, for instance, where, oh, we have technology, we have environmental catastrophe, we have poverty. There's therefore an inherent link, it's inherent in technology, it's inherent in civilization that these things are happening, and therefore we must go back to a time the, the, where that wasn't the case. But I say that is not the, the fact. The fact is, it's the way technology is being used. or the existence of civilization is the fact that there is an unequal distribution of resources. This is the problem. And technology can aid that and technology can harm that. The way that we decide to organize ourselves as a, as a society can, can promote oppression or can take it away. I think um, it's also, uh, frankly, a, a reductive <laughs> statement to say that technology is it's dependent on how it's used. What, it's neutral. It's it's not political. I think that's I think that's quite false, actually. For one thing, the technology doesn't fall down from the sky. It comes from industrialization, which is destroying the planet. It comes from the enslavement of millions of people in the mines and the foundries and the assembly lines and so on and so on and so on. So it's not it's not a neutral thing. In fact. <coughs> 
Well, no, no, 